How many of you have you graduated from junior high school? How many of you that have been graduated from junior high school? And how many of you that have graduated from senior high school? Whoa. And how many of you that have graduated from university or still studying from university? Wow. Okay. So let's take some time to have like grateful moment today because today we knew that you are 20% luckiest people in Indonesia. Why? If we take a look on the contribution number education in Indonesia, we have the number from senior high school about 76%, and the one who can continue to senior high school about 60%, and you guys are awesome because you guys are 20% luckiest people in Indonesia today, right? And the second one, if we take a look on the Student dropout in Indonesia. We have like 2.5 million student dropout in Indonesia back to 2016, and that's huge. Or every second, every five seconds, there are one kids that drop out from schools. So the questions will be: the problem is real. The problem is real. But the question: how we cope with that? How we cope with that? Are we going to stand here, or are we going to do something? Right? But how? But how? So I've been learning talking with people, with founders, leaders, right? Um, with teachers and everything. I try to see what kind of perspective and how they see the problem, right? I try to understand and come up with four steps how to become an initiator in education sectors. So I'll go to one by one. So the first one. We are, as initiator, we know, know your why. We really know our why. So that's the first step. So we have what we call as mental model. Mental model is something that, background that differentiates you between others, right? And that's become trigger. Why? Because when you're creating something movement, I can assure that 100% there will ups and down. There will be like ups and down, 100%. And this why will help you to get back to up, and that's will be, you will get your bounce back stage. And the million dollar questions will be, why this problem and why should I do this? Don't jump into conclusion, but keep asking yourself, why should I do this? That's the first one. Most of us, we want to jump into conclusion, right? Keep asking yourself why. And the second step that I've been learning so far, the second step is the new you. I would say like this is the hardest part anyway, because most of us, we have to find our best of ourselves. But most of us will see the um, difficulties, for example, we're really hard to start something, because we always think what people say, right? We always think, okay, I know what I'm doing, but I know that's also the obstacle and also burdens there. And I rather to stay here rather than to start and start small step. That's that's our biggest um, uh, challenges. Frankly speaking, I have to say to you right now that the more educated you are, the more variable that you're always thinking of, right? And that things will, in terms of decision making process, it will be take longer because a lot of things you have to think, and you you already stay here. That's the second step, and I already have a tips for you which is, um, this is, I've been doing for a decade actually, it's been 10 years, I always told myself that, what's the better version of Yasser in the next year, for example. I just put in mini board, I just put in my bedroom, right? And I just take a look every morning. And that reminds me, and just slap in my face, it's like, hey, don't, don't, just, just wake up. You have to follow your dream and you have to start. That's it, the second one. The, sec the third step is actually total action. Most of initiators, they always think using helicopter view, right? You have to think system, right? Don't need to jump into conclusion, but you have to think system. For example, if you are willing to create like developing school, for example, you just think that if, you are, if I'm willing to create a school, what variable that I have to prepare? What's something that required in order to create school? For example, the first one, I have to create, think about revenue stream. I have to think about the marketing. I have to think about the human resource and everything. 
And after that, talking about the human resource, I have to prepare about end-to-end -end process, right? Recruitment process, development process, and evaluation. A lot of things to things, but you can start small. You can start with the recruitment process first. That's what we call as total action. But you know the idea and you get the big picture of it. That's the second step. And the, third, and the fourth step is actually evaluation. This is the most important one. Why? Because in this step, you have to be very honest to yourself. Why? Because this is step where you, know, you have to evaluate yourself and you cannot improve something that you can measure. And in this step, you can measure where you are right now. In, this is second, the fourth step. Back to 2014, um, I was living in Bandung, and I saw the kids in school hour, three kids. They were playing soccer, they were helping the parents to sell something, and long story short, they are pretty much the student drop out from elementary school to junior high school. And I was simple that, okay, I really want to help this, those uh, three kids. And I was thinking that, okay, the simplest way I just registered these kids to school. That's the simplest way. I searched the school around Achamanik in Bandung, and I found the free, uh, a free charge of school. Free school, actually, open school. Open school is actually Sekolah Terbuka. It's part of formal education. We have like three years program, actually, and they will get like certification at the end, very end of the program. I just said to this school, I remember the name is Sekolah Firdaus. I said that, hey, I have three children. Would you mind to uh, register these three kids in your school? And we got, I got rejected because the school is out of quota. But I really want to help this, those kids, actually. I just said to myself, I really want to step small, right? I want to do something. I said to myself, why don't I create my own school? It's a bit sound crazy, but I really want to help them. What I'm trying to do is that I gather my, um, uh, my, my friends, my closest friends in my neighborhood, right? And I said, hey, would you mind to help me to teach these kids? And not only three kids, they are like, 13 kids, and we are creating our school from scratch. We have 13 uh, students, we have like 20 volunteers at the time, we are using voluntary teaching at the time. We do voluntary teaching, we do teach, we do home visit, we come directly to the, the, their house, right? That's what we are doing. And again, days become week, weeks become months, months become years, and also if I have successfully running this method about three years, and we have graduated about 13 students after three years program. But the new problem was coming. After they graduate, they couldn't continue to senior high school. Why? Because they couldn't afford to pay transportation, accommodation, buy school uniform, shoes, and everything, right? So the root cause is not on the kids, but also on the family. We are trying to, student, to solve children's robots, but, but the root cause in the family. So uh, we do some research to family, we do some research, and turns out the income average is around 30 until $50, or around like 300,000 until 500,000 a month. And they have like five until uh, six kids. That's crazy, but that's happened. So that's why I've come up with uh, this business model in, in, in our foundation. So I'm trying to create, if you're willing to create, like to increase, uh, to minimize the number of children drop out, right? You have to do two approach. The first one, education approach and economic empowerment. So what we are doing right now, here's the idea. We are helping the family to become self-sustained. We are creating our social partnership program. We are having incubation program within six months. The idea is that to helping the parents to increase the income and to give the insurance assurance to parents that, hey, we will help you to reach your goal in terms of the economy stability. And the output is that they will really comfortably give permission to kids to join in our school. The second step, we are helping also the kids can learn in our school. Hopefully at the end of the program, they will get more successful and they will get to family. Again, we're well back to economy stability. So that's the, the basic idea. So back to the fourth step that I already told you that. Know your why, the new you, total action and evaluation. So the question, what's the impact? So in our foundation, one of my kids named Wildan. So as you can see here, I always remember that Wildan's father says to me that, hey, yes, sir, I really want Wildan to be a bad guy. Pardon? Bad guy, or even he said that 
iya saya mau dia jadi preman cita-citanya. Really? And this happened. And as you can see here, right? The will then looks to volunteers the way she, the way he look is really intimidating, right? And yeah, this is will then is really strong guy, right? Is really passionate to um, really passionate to um, um, uh, you know talk with people. Leadership is really strong actually, right? But the thing is that we are trying to um, you know provide education, right? And also hopefully we can change the character of uh, will then. And what we are doing is actually. We've been doing this uh, method in, in with Will Done. We are providing that, hey, our volunteers said, hey, yes, sir, why don't uh, we put Will Done as our class coordinator? It's a bit risky, but I saw that Will Done has really, have really powerful, right? It's really powerful. And I decided to, okay, let's do this, right? Let's do this. And the feedback was actually really good. It's actually Will Done is really uh, can manage the school. and. Everyone do their, their homework because they scared we will done, right? And that's really, you know, and, and one thing that I really um, remember that at the very end of the program, when we had a farewell um, party after two years, Will then just came to me, brought the rose, res, uh, red uh, flower, red rose, and said to me, Kaya sir, thank you very much for your, edu for your help in education. As simple as that. And I was thinking that at the time, I only teach about two until four hours a week. I was thinking that's really small. But from Will Dan saying that, I was thinking that even we are trying to you know, help someone even two hours until four hours a week, the impact was really great. That's the beauty of education. That's one thing, one story. And the second story, one of our kids, Raihan. So Raihan, the, uh, he is joining the um, event, uh, speech competition about Japan compete with other national school, and we are the only one coming from the Sekolah Terbuka. And actually, um, Rehan also won the competition, actually. Rehan won the competition, and one of the lecturers from UNPAD just called me and said that, hey, yes, sir, do you know what's the price of this competition? I don't know, sir, what's the price? The price is well done, uh, sorry, uh, Rehan must go to Japan about a week next month. I was like, really, sir? Yes. Because I have to say with, I have to ask permission to their parents, right? Tomorrow I just ask permission and the parents say that, no need lah, I need your money to eat today. That makes sense, right? They need money, right? That's Maslow theory, the basic needs, right? But I'm trying to convince the parents and parents eventually want to um, permission, give permission to, to Raihan to go to Japan. So again, the beauty of education is that I've never been to Japan before but I couldn't be more grateful to know my kids can go to Japan. And one thing that I really remember that I just captured in Rehan um, Facebook, 15 minutes ago I just captured, and Rehan says that, even though I'm studying in open school, Alhamdulillah, I can go to Japan. I just captured this to volunteers. Thank you. And up until now, this is something that makes us, you know, really uh, passionate to run this um, foundation. And not only that, after that, the man before, Rehan went to Japan, and lecturer from UNPAD just called me back again. Yes, sir. Yeah, pa. You know that next month, Mayor of Hamamatsu, Japan, will come and visit your school. I was like, really, pa? Yeah, just prepare, oh, prepare all, all the things. And yes, the next month, after Rehan went to Japan, Hamamatsu, mayor of Hamamatsu, Japan, just came and visit our school. He really wants to know what kind of school that we are developing, what kind of socio penalty program that we are creating, and they are really want to help this community in Japan. Right? And, you know, something that you have to remember that we are starting really small, zero to one, one to two, two to ten, ten to a hundred, hundred to a thousand thousand of people. So if you are willing to create something, just dream big and start small. Thank you.